The rain trace hunting grounds are the toughest set in the game, and a couple of them can be very frustrating if you don't have a good strategy. So we're going to show you how to beat each one as easily as possible. Everything we show here will be done on the very hard difficulty level and using reasonable gear, not all legendaries. So you can be sure you'll be able to get full stripes on any difficulty. Now, I keep saying we because this video is actually one of the first projects to be produced by what we're calling the Horizon Creators Guild. A group of Horizon content creators, including myself, Elkjir, Random SideQuest, Kiersey, Atano, Chasmataz, and Honest Cake. Each of us loves Horizon and creating content for the franchise. So if you haven't met all of us yet, I'll have everybody's channels linked below. But right now, let's dive in and have Chaz walk us through the first trial. Thanks, Artix. So let's break down the Shocker Remove trial first, and then we'll take a look at it in real time. Now the challenge here is that we need to first shock the Tremor Tusk, and then while he's in the shock state, we need to remove two of his tusks. In order to get full stripes, we need to do it in less than two minutes. Now the twist is that Tremor Tusks are resistant to shock, so the game prompts us to use Purge Water in order to remove his shock resistance. But I have a trick to make things even easier than that. A lot easier. And we're going to do it using only purple gear. So if you've made it far enough into the game to get legendary coils and weapons, this should be even easier. Now there are two essential weapons we're going to need in order to complete this challenge. A weapon with shock, and a weapon with tear. There are a lot of ways to shock a machine in Horizon Forbidden West, but I'll be using the Lightning Hunter Bow because it comes with advanced Shock Hunter arrows, which are going to allow us to build up shock more quickly. And I'll have mine loaded up with 3 plus 12% shock coils. And for tear, I'll be using the Martial Hunter Bow loaded up with 3 plus 15% component tear coils. Now because we only want to remove the tusks, and we don't need to remove any armor plates on the machine, we can get away with using component tear coils as opposed to tear damage coils. But the secret to completing this challenge quickly and without having to use Purge Water is the Elemental Fury Valor Surge. The Elemental Fury Valor Surge will give us plus 200% elemental buildup of shock and gives us plus 100% elemental state duration, meaning that once we've shocked the Tremor Tusk, we'll have twice as long to shoot off the tusks. Now we're also going to equip the Nora Tracker Armor because of the plus 2 low profile skill and plus 2 quiet movement skill. These will basically ensure that the surrounding Claw Striders will completely leave us alone. To get started, I like to jump in from this far platform over on the left. Once I get over there, I'll make sure to scan the Tremor Tusk to mark his tusk. Would do a lot of damage. And then I'll double check to make sure that I have my Lightning Hunter Bow ready to go and advanced shock arrows equipped. And when I drop in, I like to wait for this Claw Strider here to make his way down towards the bottom of the screen just so I know that he won't get involved. And I'll try to land over here towards the left side on this grassy area. Now once I land, I want to trigger my Valor Surge right away. After the Valor Surge animation, I'll use the Triple Notch weapon technique to fire three shock arrows to jumpstart the shock buildup process. And it's going to take just a couple of arrows to build up enough shock to put the Tremor Tusk into the shock state. But once he's there, I'll quickly switch to my Martial Hunter Bow and aim for the tusks. Just like that, we're able to complete the Shocker Remove Trial in a little less than 30 seconds. Now I'll go ahead and pass it off to Atano, who's going to take us through the Mounted Combat Trial. Thanks Chaz. So the second trial is the Mounted Combat Trial, which requires Aloy to defeat two machines with attacks from an overridden Claw Strider. During the trial, there will be four total machines, three Claw Striders and one Tremor Tusk. After overriding one of the Claw Striders, your focus should be on taking out the other two. Only the final blow will need to come from the overridden Claw Strider for it to count, meaning you can deplete a large portion of the other machine's health bar using Aloy's ranged weapons. This is going to be the main strategy, depleting the Claw Strider's health with Aloy's ranged weapons before finishing them off with a single strike from the overridden Claw Strider. So first, let's go over the most ideal weapons, outfits, and coils to have equipped before you start the trial. For starters, you'll want to look out for the Machine Master line of outfits. Both the Tanakh Recon and Tanakh Dragoon will work for today's demo. The Tanakh Dragoon obtainable at Fall's End features a built-in mounted archer perk for increasing Aloy's range damage when atop her mount. You can buff Aloy's range damage in other ways aside from the 
mounted archer perk, which is why I prefer to rock the Tanakh the Recon available at Thornmarsh, which replaces mounted archer with a machine damage perk. At level 2, this allows your claw strider to deal an additional 100% damage. This is the easiest way to increase machine damage, aside from the passive boost which you can unlock in the skill tree. On either of these outfits, you should rock a plus 2 low health ranged weave for increased impact damage when below 50% health. For your second weave, you can run weapon stamina plus, since we'll be using the triple notch weapon technique throughout the trial. Now for weapons, there are three types you'll want to have for the trial. A rope caster to immobilize the tremor tusk, a shock weapon to immobilize the two claw striders, and a hunter bow for then dealing damage to those claw striders. The elite rope caster obtainable in Thornmarsh is the best rope caster in the base game, and when fully upgraded, it can tie down the tremor tusk with only two of its advanced binding ropes. On it, I run a full set of reload speed coils, one 25% and two 15%. You could also swap in a 25% draw speed coil, but personally, I like to save that coil for my Marshall Hunter Bow instead. The Marshall Hunter Bow, which we used in the first trial, will be a great choice if you don't yet have the legendary Death Seeker Shadow. When fully upgraded, it will deal 80 impact damage per arrow. Make sure to have that 25% draw speed coil equipped, along with two 18% shocked enemy damage coils to nicely complement our Lightning Hunter Bow shock arrows. We'll be using this bow to immobilize the Claw Striders, so make sure to have some shock damage coils equipped. Both the 12% and 15% versions of these coils will work work for today's demo. Now that you have the necessary gear, let's walk through our main strategy. Once you start the trial, jump down and damage yourself from the fall to activate the low health ranged weave on your equipped outfit. Head to the right and override the closest claw strider to you. Be sure to set it to defensive so it doesn't start attacking other machines while we start the next step. Now tie down the tremor tusk with your elite rope caster. It should only take two ropes to do this. Next, fire an arrow to grab the attention of the claw strider to your right before heading back to your mount. Fire one more arrow at this same claw strider to fully alert it and have it follow you to the other side of the hunting grounds. Run to the other claw strider, immobilize it with your triple knot shock arrows, and then target their razor tail to deal some impact damage as well as removal damage once it gets torn off. I find that removing the tail and then firing two or three shots to the body puts them at just the right amount of health to finish them off with an attack or two from your claw strider. You can also target the resource containers on their back, but I avoid doing this since sometimes I will end up hitting the armor plates, so surrounding them instead. The second claw strider should have followed you over to your current location. Now all you have to do is rinse and repeat the process of immobilizing, removing their razor tail, firing a couple arrows to their body, and finishing them off with an attack from your claw strider. Ideally this could all be done in about one minute, but as long as you complete the trial within two and a half minutes, you'll obtain full stripes. Now that you have this trial completed, I'll pass it off to Arctics to explain the final heavy weapons trial. Awesome, thanks Atano. So for the heavy weapons trial, we need to tear off some of the Tremor Tusk cannons and use them to kill the Claw Striders. The trick to doing this under the three minute time limit is leveraging immobilization tactics, including smoke bombs, a rope caster, and shock, specifically with the Radial Blast Valor Surge. All right, so let me break down our build for the trial and then we'll jump into it. So for an outfit, I'm gonna go with the blue Nora Sentinel. Nothing really special here. I have a couple of blue melee defense weaves on it. Uh, the stamina regen and concentration skill perks are helpful, but not critical. So nothing really special about that outfit. Nothing really special about this blue slicing hunter bow either. I just need a weapon I can use to basically aggro the claw striders at a certain point, which you'll see in a minute. This purple glow blast sharp shot bow is pretty critical though. So we want that for the tear precision arrows to get the cannons off the tremor tusk. And then the third weapon we need is a rope caster. I'm going to be using the anchor, but I would highly recommend getting the elite from Thornmarsh first if you can. But it can be done with a lower rarity one, and I'm going to use the anchor with just one draw speed coil on it. Okay, another critical thing here is gonna be the Valor Surge, which is Radial Blast. This is gonna allow us to shock the Claw Striders and deal a bunch of damage to them. And you do want this at level three first, if you're on higher difficulties, like very hard. Um, and before you start the trial, you're going to wanna make sure you have full Valor. So in the bottom right there, you can see my purple Valor bars all the way filled up. So you wanna make sure you have that ready to go before you jump in. And then the last thing is in the bottom left, I'm gonna make sure I have at least three or four smoke bombs ready to go. And then we'll go ahead and start the trial. All right, so right before we jump in here, I'm gonna highlight the shock cannons on top of the tremor tusk. We're gonna end up tearing those off right off the bat with our tear precision arrows on the glow blast. So we'll jump right in here. And we're gonna try and get both of them off in one shot, which it helps to basically hit one on like the inner edge while he's turning here. So that should get both of them for us, which it does. That's awesome. And we got a tear damage boost because we're in stealth here. 
So now our priority is to tie down the Tremor Tusk to basically take him out of the fight for the rest of it. So we'll run over here. I'll pop smoke to make this a little easier. And then we can use a combination of regular rope caster shots and the penetrating rope weapon technique to tie him down. So if anybody starts attacking you here, you can pop smoke again. And again, having the elite rope caster makes that go a little faster, but we got it done here. So he's down for 90 seconds now. We don't have to worry about him. And now we need to get all the claw striders to group up. So we want to kind of bait them in here if they're not already coming. Sometimes they're on the edges there and they don't really notice where you are. So you have to bait them a little bit, but you can't deal too much damage to them because we're going to try and get them all bunched up here. And then you'll see that our Radio Blast Valor Surge is going to almost kill them. So if we do too much damage, we will kill them with the, bl the Radio Blast. And then we won't be able to complete the challenge because we have to kill them with the uh, Shock Cannons. So what I just did there, 41 damage, that's, a, that's about as much as you want to do. So you kind of have to have some patience here and play chicken with them. They're all pretty close to each other right now, so I'm going to go ahead and pop smoke. This is about as spread out as you can have them. So I'll position myself in the middle and we'll hit the Radio Blast Valor Surge. Which you can see almost kills them and also immobilizes them with shock. So I'm going to get ropes on them while they're down to make sure they don't move. We can pop smoke again here if they start to get up. Okay, so they're all roped down. And now we just need to go find a cannon that we tore off, which there's one right here. And we should be able to hit each one of them with one, one or two balls of energy, depending on which difficulty you're on here. And... That's the trial. Now, if you're on a difficulty lower than very or ultra hard, you can't use the level three radio blast because it will kill the claw striders in one shot. So instead you just want to rope them down and you can use smoke bombs to make that a little bit easier. And then you need to kill them using more shots from the shock cannons. All right, guys, I hope these strategies help you crush the rain trace trials. We'll be continuing this series for the other hunting grounds and I'll throw the next one up right here when we have it. And the whole series will also be linked below. For now, you might want to check out my rope caster masterclass for some tips that make that last trial even easier. You can also find Atano and Jazz's channels linked below along with all the other Horizon Creators Guild members and I definitely recommend checking them out. Everyone does something a little different so I'm sure you'll find some more Horizon content you enjoy. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.